thank you all for coming and taking a risk that this would actually turn out good. Um, the whole idea about this is to give us a feel of what actually entrepreneurship is and the idea is to build a, sk a skill set along through the years. So the idea is that we provide really beneficial workshops that build and build and build into a real beneficial skill set that will be useful in any aspect, not just in entrepreneurship. But we're hoping then that there'll be another thing that will sit behind it to engage at a deeper level. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk for 20 minutes, we're going to have each entrepreneur speak for about 20 minutes each and then we're going to have a panel discussion where we'll have a chat about uh, and people can ask questions from the, from the audience. We're now called Blue Chief Social. We weren't always called Blue Chief Social. We used to be called Blue Chief Solutions. So I finished college in January 2012 in UL. I like managing people. I like making sales. My business partner is an introvert, very intelligent, very on the ball, process driven and loves developing software. So in March 2012, after we finished up college, we decided we were going to set up a business. And what was the business going to do? It was going to align to our skill set. So we're both problem solvers. I'm an independent person, I like being on my own. But starting a business is a lonely place. I'm here to tell you today I motivate you and it's a brilliant place. It's the best place in the world. We want to take over the world. We want to create change across the world. And we believe fully that we can do it from right here in UL. And so should you. Because the world is at your fingertips. We're now in a generation where technology is present to everybody. And if it's not, it's probably your fault. Don't just think local. If you're thinking about a problem and you'll see it later on, make sure it's scalable. If the problem here is local, it's probably the same problem internationally. If you are passionate about what you do, truly passionate about what you do, that will radiate to other people and they get attracted to that. That's how you start by building your team and not doing it on your own. If you can't find a job, create a job. Simple. In an entrepreneur's life, you have to be as positive as possible all of the time. The three steps that we find. Find a problem, do your research, and build your team. I have a partner, and most other people involved in businesses that we know that become successful. I'm not saying you can't do it as an individual, you definitely can, but more often than not, it's a partnership that works. One of the biggest things about being an entrepreneur is you have to own up to responsibility. I'll be retired at 40. What will you be doing? That's my goal for life to create as much change as I can, in as many places as I can, generate as much revenue as I can, and give the majority of it away, because it's not about money. It's about creating that change. The biggest secrets we have, or the top tips I have for entrepreneurs, build and test quickly, have short-term goals, find a partner, be patient, frustration is part of the experience, and startup life is the best. I really love it. I don't think there's anything better in the world for it. You get to do what you want, when you want, and how you want. You get to wear what you want. You get to meet the people that you want to meet. And the only responsibility you really have is to your dream and to your vision. People keep asking me to do business plans. I don't want to do a business plan because I don't need a business plan. So why would I spend time doing it? But one of the things I've learned throughout these last few years is experience above energy. You'd want to be mad to be in a startup, I fully mean it. It's one of the hardest things to do in the world. I'm not denying that. I, I know you probably agree with me on this. But it's one of the most fulfilling things to do in the world. There's nothing that makes me feel better in the world than being involved in a startup. There's nothing that frustrates me more in the world than being involved in a startup. But I really, really wouldn't change it for the world. Um, thank you very much. Um, Prior to Yellow Schedule, I was in digital marketing for 10 years. Um, enjoyed it, but I was starting to get fed up with it. And it's, it's a services industry. All you can sell is your time. So you've got a certain amount of hours in the week, and it's not scalable. You can only sell how many hours you have in the week. The idea, I was aware that I was looking to do something else and looking to start something that was bigger and scalable. Um, but nothing had hit me in terms of ideas. Now, one of the things about me that all my friends and family know is that I'm really, really bad at dates and really bad at times. So anytime Owen asks me to do something, he generally has to come and knock on the door and tell me that it's time. And I started thinking about the problem and I thought that, you know, given all the technology you have, that in this day and age, the fact that there aren't really that many appointment reminders, and it just got me thinking about solutions. So I started to do some market research. And then I was really lucky in terms of a co-founder. Um, my brother is my co-founder, so I did my research first of all. When I sold it to him, luckily enough he bought it. 
Um, and that's where the idea came from. I would say to be in a society like this is really, really valuable, to be able to speak to entrepreneurs, people have done it, but to talk to each other. Because I didn't know anybody in my circle of friends who was working for themselves. I didn't have the networks, I didn't have the connections, I had to build them and build, build them really, really slowly. If you're thinking of setting up a business, really, you know, tell everybody you know, tell your friends, tell your family. People will more often than not, 90% of the time, tell you that you're mad to go and get a safe job. Talk to people, take their feedback on board, and then, like me, you're going to go with your gut feeling. The timing, I would say, you know, looking at all of you guys, it's really good timing for you. I would agree largely with what Shane had to say, but some of it I, I would disagree with, perhaps. Um, I think it's very, very hard if you haven't worked for people before and, you know, try to learn from as many departments as you can and try to get a mentor in there and really just soak up everything you can with the idea in the back of your mind that you're going to set up your own company. You're going to need to know how to, you know, uh, hire people effectively. You're going to need to know how to make sales. You're going to need to know how to manage your customers, keep them happy. Do you want that stress? Do you want a huge investor who's perhaps going to remove you as CEO at some point because they own half the company? So just be really sure that you know what all the steps mean. In Ireland, that's not the case. And in Ireland, you're probably not going to get funding until you're already making money. If you're in Ireland, you need to have a clear path to monetization. You probably need to have some early traction and you'll need to be able to show them that you're on a, a growth curve before they'll invest. If you're trying to build a company, you want people who are smarter than you. You want people who can make sales. You want people who know about product development, process management, and you want the best in the world. You just have to have strong gut feelings. You have to be the sort of pers person who can make a decision and be happy with it and go with that decision. If you want to do it, it's, it's all there for the taking. Thank you. We had a, an event there Friday that, that Shane ran, ran in um, Tralee. It's something that I started here a couple of months ago and then moved down Mount Tralee the, this year. But um, there was a guy uh, who asked a question and I thought it was a very, very interesting question. And he was saying, how protective of your ideas do you have to be? If you don't tell people your idea, how can they make it better? Because if you're the person who's sitting down thinking of the best idea in the world and it's going to solve everything, well, best of luck with it. People make your ideas better. If you have knowledge and connections in a particular area, that makes it harder for somebody to take your idea. Taking your ideas, throwing them at a wall and seeing what sticks. So using these iterations, short-term iterations, a new four or five ideas. Why not develop the four or five ideas? Put six or eight weeks into them on, run with them and test these ideas, and you'll find out the three of them are absolutely nonsense. <coughs> Two of them are somewhat plausible, but one of them is definitely a good idea. If I was doing it again, I would speak to customers before I had a product. 